Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are back with the amazing Simbox application you guys. I've got some really cool things to show you about it but today as you guys can see I'm going to show you how to make a fully functional G1000 out of any mobile device that you have or local touch screen on your computer. Stick around because I guarantee you want to see this one. Make sure if you guys can that you join us at Flight Sim Expo 2023. That's right, Overkill Simulations is going to be present this year, guys, at the Lone Star Museum in Houston, Texas. If you guys are interested in joining us there, be sure to check down the description below. There is a coupon code that can save you guys a bit of money uh, using my personal reference uh, to get you there. Again, that'll save you a bit of cash in your Flight Sim Expo 2023 experience. This is gonna be June 23rd through the 25th of 2023, uh, again in Houston, Texas, at the Lone Star Flight Museum. I went a few years ago in Las Vegas and they are an absolute great time. There's some very, very informative and educational seminars to help better your flight sim experience, as well as a ton of developers of both hardware and software that you guys actually get to try out, essentially a try before you buy experience, as well as talking with the developers themselves and uh, finding out what the products are all about. So again, guys, it's gonna be Flight Sim Expo 2023 in Houston, Texas. I hope to see you guys all there. Don't forget to use my coupon code that you can find down in the description below. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. All right, guys, so I have done a review of the Simbox app a little while back here, and it's been a while since I have re-referenced it. And uh, the developer put out actually his own YouTube video that caught my attention the other day where he had shown off his ability to do what you guys are seeing here, which is to create his own G1000. Now, I am showing you guys the windowed mode or window availability, I should say, option using the Simbox app. And we're going to get all into the setup and everything like that here in just a little bit. So bear with me. But I want you guys to understand that you can do this from the window app like you are seeing here. And this is extremely useful if you are doing something like a touch screen um, or something like that that is already on your local workstation that you want to be able to essentially turn into a uh, G1000. Um, but you also have the Simbox control app or Simbox app, I should say, which can be downloaded from any Apple store or Android store as well. And then finally, there's the web browser option, which allows you to use a any mobile device to log in using a web browser um, to the Simbox control app and essentially create the same thing. Now, again, there's going to be some caveats, there's going to be some catches, there's going to be some gotchas, there's going to be some things that work better than others, but this thing is well on its way to being a very fantastic uh, addition to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, I want to make sure that everyone does also understand one thing that I think is super critical when you look at an application like this. Keep in mind, guys, that the developer of this particular application is a single person, one person who has taken their time to uh, dedicate to our hobby. Um, so please keep that in mind when you think about the progress of the application and how far it has truly come and the features are available and those that are yet uh, to be shown. So first off, I'm going to show you guys some very simple uses of it, right? So we're just going to literally go side by side here. Um, you guys are going to see this window disappears for just a second because I need to move the camera over. I want you guys to be able to see everything side by side. Let me get that yoke out of there. And then I'm going to bring up, like I said, I'm doing this in a windowed mode. So you guys may see things a little funky. So bear with me here. Uh, but here we go. So first off, and I want you guys to picture, you guys are seeing the mouse. I'm using the mouse for your benefit, but I want you to picture this on a touch screen or on your 10 inch tablet or, you know, something like that. I mean, if you really wanted to, it would be super small and probably hard to do, but you could actually use your cell phone for this. Uh, but this is definitely ideal for something like, you know, uh, some sort of tablet or a Kindle or an iPad, or a, like I said, a touch screen that's already connected to the workstation. So anyway, uh, I digress. Let's go ahead. And by the way, you can very easily resize it. Okay. And move it around here. And again, I'm going to show you guys how to set it up later on. So here we go. So I want you guys just always to pretend that the mouse is my finger on a touch screen. Cause that's essentially what, where this would really shine, but we can 
very quickly watch the response time between the two um very quickly adjust any of our settings that we're looking to uh to have here it's really really nice okay uh the response time is just perfect absolutely perfect and i've tested this on both the 10 inch android tablet that i have as well as uh this windowed mode which i'll show you guys how to set up later on uh your cdi changes i mean absolutely everything works perfect right down to your autopilot controls okay now I'm going to let you guys know right now that one caveat to this, and even the developer has come out and basically said the same thing. That is still a work in progress and something that needs a bit more adjustment are the rotaries. Now, bear with me on this for a second. If you have something like Knobster or something similar to Knobster, even something like I actually just thought about something that I might be able to use, which is controllers on my um, uh, throttle. Uh, maybe we can, I can figure out a way to do this. We'll see. But if you have something like Knobster or a, uh, you know, something similar to that, um, this becomes very, very easy. Now, I don't have anything like Knobster yet. By the way, Knobster, if you're listening and want to send me one, I wouldn't say no. Um, but I don't have anything like that as of yet. So what you do have the option for is a virtual rotary. Okay. That's going to be any of these knobs. And I'm going to show you how this all works here in just a minute. So my situation is I do not have a knobster. So if I click on that, okay, what we would normally see pop up here is a virtual. Oh, you know what? I think I have it turned off. Yes, I do. Okay. That would explain that. I was like, uh, there's something that's supposed to happen there. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to click on that again. Let's go let's use, let's use the altitude one. And so here are the virtual rotaries, right? And I think I need to expand that just a little bit because the push functionality is missing from this particular window. Normally there's a push button here or a push option here. Let's go back over here for a second. Let me dial those back just a bit. There we go. So it's not going to let me move these around you guys. So I can use, for example, there it goes. You guys saw the altitude. I'm using the mouse wheel, okay? And if I go to the bottom wheel here, okay, either way I go, it tends to only give me the thousands of feet. There we go. Or you can use your mouse wheel or your mouse direction. You see how I'm doing that? So it really depends on what you're trying to do. Okay, and then when you're done, you just left click, right? So then we can click the outer wheel, I think. There you go. So it's really not a bad process at all. And again, remember my finger for you guys' benefit, my finger is the mouse, okay? Because again, a touch screen is where you would really find yourself using this. So it's not terrible. It's really not terrible. And if we go to the, the heading mode, right? We can do the same thing. There's our push button. You wanna set your heading bug, right? And it'd be the same thing. So check that out. And you can move it quickly or you can pull it back. If you just move it slowly. So picture you guys doing all this on a touch screen with your finger. Now, the one thing that's a drag at the moment is there isn't, once you click on one of these, right? There isn't any way to remove this cursor. Okay, or the, these wheels. So what I have found as a workaround, what you can do when you're done using the rotors and, you, and you, let's say you want these to go away, I like a very clean screen. Uh, so if you want these to go away, you would hit go back to your settings, just enable it and disa or disable it and enable it again. And when you come back, they're gone until you need one again. So that's how you would do it if you were using a touch screen, okay? And if you did not, did not have anything like Knobster, Okay, and for those of you who don't know what Knobster is, I will leave a link to their site down in the description below in case you guys are interested in checking something like this out. Okay, so full control, you guys. But you guys can see, for example, if we want to change the barometric pressure. Okay, and let's see, that would be what outer knob would be the barrel, right? There's our barometric pressure changing as we choose. Okay, and then if for any reason we want to change course wheel. There's our course wheel. Center it. Current. Easy peasy, guys. So literally, we're going to turn anything we want into. And again, I already showed you guys 
all of this jazz. There's our CDI. Set the CDI to the FMS. Our transponder. Set your code. Let's turn it on. Even though we're on the runway, we absolutely want on altitude. But you guys catch the gist. Absolutely everything is fully functional here for the G1000. And again, if you have Knobster or something like that, it's even better because as soon as you highlight one of these, Knobster takes over, right? So you can use the inner and outer rotaries. You want to switch to heading, you just click on your heading mode, switch it, and, and do what you need to do. As soon as you highlight one of these when you're using Knobster, which the options here, we would just disable the virtual knobs, right? And then you would be able to, and I will show you guys from the control app, uh, configure Knobster to work with it. So really, really slick. The other thing that I want to show you guys that has been added is the map. Check this out. Current altitude, 48, 27 feet, heading 216 speed at zero knots. Easily able to zoom in. Not only can you zoom in, it centers in on the aircraft. Also gives you the runway heading of the, uh, or the heading of the runway that you're currently on. And there was one more thing that I wanted to show based on location. So here you have parking, parking, a helicopter pad. Uh, that's actually, uh, I don't think that's aircraft parking over there. Um, but let's see here. There was, let me show you guys, for example, Tucson. It's going to take a minute. I got to zoom way out here. So hang on. There we go. Now there's a little bit of configuration for this part, but just a matter of getting an API key. But check this out. For example, Tucson here, there's Alpha 7, Alpha 8, Alpha 10. I have all of my taxiways, Delta. There's our runway again. Let's see here. Um, there you go. 1-1 one, one right, 2-9 or left, 1-1 one, one left, 2-9 or right. All of your gates. Gives you all of the information that you guys need in order to navigate your way around the airports. Again, right there. And again, we can walk through SimBrief. I don't have my sim brief, sim brief user configured here, but it's there. Autopilot control, same thing. You have your Knobster and things like that. Although with the G1000, you would do it just from there. But this is for any other aircraft that you wanted to. All of your radio, again, G1000, you wouldn't have to worry about that. But this is for, again, other aircraft. Now, one of the cool things about this, guys, if you guys haven't ever seen this before, is check it out. We have a couple of other profiles that are available. The Fly-By-Wire development version, Fly-By-Wire, the experimental version, the Phoenix A320, uh, PMDG 737 series of aircraft, GA default, and of course, again, the default uh, G1000. Now, here's where this all comes into even further play, right? Uh, let's go back to our G1000. So where this all comes into further play and the reason for the excitement of all of this, you guys, is so with these pop-out windows, and I'm going to show you a neat tool to make the pop-out minute. Uh, windows a little bit easier as well as a couple other things that may help you guys so let's go ahead and get in some tips and tricks about setting this up and then we'll while we're doing that we'll talk about some of the benefits to it all right so the next piece is setting it all up right so i'm not going to go through everything about how to start up simbox from start to finish i will tell you that you want to have you on the latest version make sure you go to your updates if you have if you've already purchased it if not there will be a link down in the description below where to download it you purchase it from the website first, and then you can get it for your Androids, your iPhones, et cetera, like that. But you would need the license, which we would come here. No, I'm not going to go into it because it would show you guys my license. Um, but you also have a very awesome documentation site. He has done a fantastic job with his documentation. I love his documentation. Give me a second. I have a filter on, which is why the screen looks weird. Everything you need here. Let me move my window up a little bit so you guys can see it. Darn it. I did not want to do that. Sorry, guys. There we go. So here is everything that you would need walking right through start to finish, how to set everything up. I mean, it's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and he's got a YouTube video for most of this stuff. And we can actually set up split screens on this now, which I haven't even gotten into yet. Uh, probably not going to get into in today's video. Again, he's already done some great videos on this, but I wanted you guys to show you, or I wanted to show you guys some of the resources you have available. So first thing that you're gonna do in order to set all this up, you guys, is you wanna make sure that you launch this app, which is the Simbox Control app, which is installed on your PC. Make sure you launch it in administrative mode. Now you guys can see that you can use a QR code to open it on a web device. So again, Apple, iPad, um, Kindle, Android, you name it, simply use the camera and uh, it should open up the QR code. Uh, Simbox app, same thing. Um, whatever you're running the actual application from. So this is if you wanna use a web browser, this is if you want to use 
um, the actual Simbox app that can be found in the various stores. Um, and it will launch it, pull it up right there, it creates the connection. You just have to make sure that you're on the same Wi-Fi network, right? Open window, this window here, this is what you guys are seeing, what we've been showcasing this whole time. This is this, this is the window mode, okay? Um, and then again, open browser, self-explanatory, right? So if we go over to settings here, this is where I was talking to you guys before. Virtual display, you guys can see where the display actually is, okay? In relationship to here. We're just using a pop-out window is what we do. But the reason why you have to launch this in administrative mode is because the administrative mode has to have access to create the virtual monitor. When we first launch this window, this monitor will not be here, okay? Um, and I can actually show you guys that if we need to at the end, but I don't think so. Uh, basically, you'll pull this application up and right here, instead of seeing the G1000, you would see enable. All right. And you would click that and it would create the virtual window. All right. USB. Again, if you have something like Knobster, this is where that would be. Uh, that would be traced and, and shown. Right. And then again, the SIM brief username. Um, obviously, like I said, I don't have mine currently set up. But what the heck? Let's go ahead and try this real quick. I can't remember if it's underscore or not. I know it's still productions. Now let's come back over here and let's see if that worked. I didn't think so because I don't have, gosh, I haven't made a flight plan on SimBrief in quite a while. Well, maybe we'll try that out later on. So other than that, you guys, it's pretty simple to use. Again, with the map, uh, going back to the SimBox control app, it's pretty simple. Just come over here. This is where that API would need to go. Um, and then you just hit save. If, you know, um, you guys, uh, it's free to create the API. Click the link right here where it says manual and it tells you guys how to do it. Um, so it takes about three minutes and you get your API key and you copy it in, hit save, and the map is ready to go. Um, files, things like that. If you guys want it to be able to pull up specific checklists, things like that, it can do that. It's a really slick application, you guys, really slick app. Um, and I wanted to be able to share this with you because this particular piece definitely opens up a ton of, a ton of option for custom home build cockpits, especially on a budget, giving you a far further enhanced simulation experience without necessarily breaking the bank for some of the uh, um, G1000 panels and things like that are out there. I know that there is one company, for example, that is doing the G1000 panel here where just the panel without the screen, uh, oh, excuse me, it does have a screen, I'm sorry. Panel and screen is something somewhere around 650 bucks, which is pretty reasonable when you think about what it's capable of, but um, definitely not what you'd call cheap, right? So uh, anyways, let me know what you guys think down below of an application like this. Again, a link to the purchase site can also be found in the description below. Uh, the developer is also very, very responsive to his clientele base. He has a link on his uh, website to the Discord channel. Um, he's been in contact with me pretty pretty consistently almost every time that I've had to ask a question. He's responsive. Remember, if you guys are having issues, he is a single person doing this. So make sure you give him time to address the issues if there's something critical, um, as well as give him a chance to respond. Um, I really appreciate this developer. I think he's doing a fantastic job. And this is really, it's this application has come a long way since my first review of it. And this G1000 edition is something that is absolutely crucial. Um, Little tip to the developer, G3000 maybe? <clears throat> Just, uh, you know, <clears throat> G3000, G G5000. Uh, yeah, that would be nice to see. Anyways, not that I'm being greedy. As always, guys, stay safe and healthy. To the developer, fantastic work. I look forward to see what you come up with next, and I'll see you guys in the next one.